to uh, you all. Uh, it's really a wonderful morning, but I think it's a cause of worry because late November in Delhi, it should not be such a good morning. So it seems that uh, the effects of climate change are already here. But let us all enjoy this wonderful day. Uh, may I request uh, uh, the key persons to please come on the dais. I request Sri Ravi Singh Ji. I request uh, Anupam Mishra Ji. Kalyan Rudra Ji. Please, please come on the dais. Sri Ravi Agrawal Ji. Sri Humanshu Thakkar Ji. Our chief guest for this uh, event, uh, the Honorable Water Minister, Government of Delhi, uh, Shri Kapil Mishra. He's been slightly delayed. Uh, you see, we are grateful that he's coming because he lost his Mosaji just this morning. And uh, despite that, he, he said that I will make it a point to come, uh, but he may be a little delayed. Uh, I am really grateful to Anupam Ji, Anupam Mishra Ji, who is uh, recovering from a very serious illness that he could find time to be with us here. Yeah. Really. Uh, So our chief guest will join us uh, during the, the proceedings. May I request Sri Ravi Singh Ji, the Secretary General and CEO of WWF India, uh, for his Ashirwad. No, sir. <coughs> I don't know whose Ashirwad he's <coughs> referring to. There are such senior people here, uh, and people of knowledge and understanding. Let me start uh, from avoiding the Ashirwad part, but uh, the, uh, I welcome you here. I wish, uh, uh, I wish some of you, and I think it's important that you should know the amount of work that Himanshu and Manoj have put in behind this, and also members of my team. It takes a lot of effort which goes on behind the scenes, which is uh, laudable, sometimes not fully understood, sometimes not uh, uh, appreciated sufficiently. <coughs> I, uh, I have no uh, hesitation in saying that in such gatherings and meetings where we talk about our rivers, I re really and truly miss Dr. Ramaswamy Ayer. I miss his uh, counsel, his company. I know he's watching over us. And he sees and understands the changes and challenges that our country is facing. But, uh, you know, at least to me and the readings from his book are ones that always guided us. I don't know if some of, some of you may know that when the issue started, the first issue started on the uh, interlinking of rivers. And uh, there was a group put together. He was the one who was leading it at that time. And what he's, he stood and said at that time continues to be relevant till today. <coughs> I, uh, uh, I, I'd like to say three or four things about uh, what my view on this is. It's tremendous that society, civil society, people like you, <coughs> people who have been honored by states and by institutions and by our government, are here today to, to, to interact and understand, give us an idea, um, 
of what the challenges lie and then go forward and discuss more than the idea as to how things will happen. <clears throat> I have traveled extensively in India, though not as extensively as some of you. I've seen uh, a view of my country from the time that I've, uh, I can recall. I think the earliest memories that I have are of rivers, whether it was a house which we had close to a river or when we crossed it going to different places. Most of the rivers that I remember, barring some of the big arteries of this country, have not fundamentally changed. I'm happy to say some of those things that I remember, recall, are still somewhat, not entirely pristine, but still are there in the existing stage. <clears throat> some, of course, uh, it's not entirely true, but some of them have completely changed. Uh, I remember as a child standing on, a, on an area not far from uh, the present locations from where you can see the Ram Ganga in Moradabad and seeing the swath of the river uh, flowing through white sands and with the forest encroaching almost up to the point of the river on the, on the shore of the river. It's not too far back. And these kind of sites we see only now in protected areas and, 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 are, in our, and our reserves. Um, interactions of rivers and forests that we have seen in the Himalayas and also in the foothills. These kind of maps are available when I studied history in college of the times that were not so, again, not so far back as an historian, but those have disappeared from, from the time that we have. I'm talking about places like Hastinapur, areas of Malwa and uh, parts of Goa and others where actually I, you know, there are maps that existed, I still recall them, of how the forests were very close to the river. These are things that are images that somehow in our minds are there so that we can at least look at some of those inspirations and go back to something that perhaps cannot be entirely done, but at least be achieved in some way. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'll relate two or three incidents and I request you to understand some things from my, my viewpoint. Some years ago, uh, I was called, I was requested to come for a small meeting with some members of parliament. The earlier Congress government had just been uh, elected and uh, they wanted to know what is it, the what are the concerns that an environmentalist has with regard to India? And what is the main thing that we can do, one big factor that we can do to change the environment as a government because the government was getting into, uh, you know, that we, we've, we have got majority, we can galvanize support, we can do many things. And at that time, some of us who were there, we talked about one thing, because there are many issues on the environment, but we said at that time that if you have to look after the, the health of the country, the health of many areas, including you know, in the oceans and seas and all that, that you've got to improve the quality of the rivers. What is required to be done? So he said five, four or five things, and of course, important aspect is let the river also flow as a natural body. Since then until now, I think about 15 odd years have gone uh, from that conversation, 14, 15 years have gone. I must say that uh, the situation has deteriorated. It has not exactly stayed the same. And in this particular aspect, the one thing that comes to me is that when we look at the extent of deterioration, the extent of uh, where we are going with all this, I think it's important that the government has a role, and it has the main role, certainly. But I would also try and say that in terms of all our responsibilities, we also have a role by ourselves, so that we don't put everything onto the government to say that you're responsible. There are other areas of working through society, through, through again, I'm sorry to say this, agencies and municipalities, but certainly with, with communities and others to make things happen which are different, which perhaps we are not doing sufficiently. Some are, I think we can do much more in that. Uh, why should it only uh, be one aspect of one area? And some of these issues that are inspirations for us as human beings, I think even if you can involve a few more people in all this to create what will be the inspiration of the generation to go forward, it would be important. The second factor that I, 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 I would like to bring to you is that I participate sometimes, not often, 
since I left my uh, business uh, background, I do interact sometimes with bodies on government or as also with business and industry and corporate sector. The corporate sector in two of its largest institutions who interact on this, uh, the FICI and CII, have themselves, they have uh, councils which relate to water. A lot of the work that they do also is the responsibility of how industries and businesses uh, you know, need to interact with water. It's taken some time for moving their understanding from looking at very site-specific aspect to a basin-related aspect. हम लोगों को बेसिन के बारे में बताएं तो it it comes naturally to us लेकिन industry does not respond to that extent does not so it's taken some time but having done that I think some of us need to form interactive groups to interact with these these councils to say that these are the concerns that come out of our area our groups our teams because in those there is no interaction I see, virtually no interaction to make people understand what this is. And it's not that it's always only uh, sustainability as a term that is adopted by corporate India. It's not just that CSR will work on this as issue. But also that in that area, and I'm, I've also been part of it, there are many people who work in these institutions who are sensitive, who are talented, who take initiative, are also leaders, and they have families and groups within those corporations who are by themselves constituencies that will make a change in effect. I know that it happens in other areas of conservation. But on this, perhaps, we should try in our groups to also try and influence them. I'm happy to, to, to bring these groups together, and I'm happy to interact with these. Uh, and some of you I know in some councils we have been together. We have uh, not been able to uh, take our voice forward as much as we can. But it has made a difference. And the difference is very small right now. The graph has, on that side is moving very slowly. It's moving, but it's moving slowly. And perhaps that's one thing that we could look at. <clears throat> Lastly, on this fact, there is a role for wetlands and their eminence of rivers in certain basins and the old times. And there's an interaction and, and, and something that we need to look at on that side. And too little work is going on in wetlands at this point of time. This is not the fora to talk about it entirely, but I would say just do keep this factor in mind as well, because we do work on those areas from time to time. <clears throat> I welcome, at this point of time, the minister's not here, I welcome all of you. Uh, people who are sitting in the audience and sitting here are those who have also helped and inspired me in a lot of, of the work that m my team does. I am, uh, I think in, in the icons that we have on conservation, I think water is one of those which has led, who has a number of his leaders that we can relate to and understand. And I'm very proud and I'm happy of the fact that we are here together. If there is anything that, uh, uh, that, that, that is left behind from the work of the last two years or three years, I can say that the, there needs to be more of us who are acting as boots on the ground in certain areas. And I'm sure that these things make, make, make for a certain difference. If we were to start relating some of the successes or the work with the communities, that several other organizations, including ours, including mine, have done through different areas, I can see there's a replication of some of these examples as they go forward. There is a work, the, 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 the comparative work that we are doing in the Ram Ganga, if you look at similarity with the work that the groups are doing on the Hindan, and now moving on to Hasanapur through other people, there's a lot of similarity between them. And perhaps some of these uh, groups have not sufficiently met or discussed or seen, and that replication needs to happen too. These are some of my thoughts. And uh, I'm speaking from a point of view as I see it. I see business and industry not responding sufficiently. And then what are the means and modes to be able to do that? I see that uh, it's not always 
the government's responsibility to do everything. I think we also have to see on our own behavior. And lastly, this issue of the footprint. You know, the, 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 the sheer footprint of the planet, as you know, some of you have read our Living Planet report, and the aspect of the footprint that India itself has responsibility for. And it's not just a question of saving, but it's also a question of how we manage this better. And last, because of my own, uh, 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 lastly, because of my own interest, please, when in your discussions, try and think of the dolphins and the otters in Karyal. Because they are the first who, they were here before us, and now we are responsible for their future through whatever the elements are. And uh, I, know you, I, I know you understand what I mean. Uh, but uh, there's not sufficient amount of discussion on biodiversity and the elements that actually are the indicators of that. Thank you. Welcome. I hope we have a productive time. And I'll join you from time to time during the period of time that this goes on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I request uh, Himanshu Thakkarji to please want to speak from there. Please come and uh, tell us about this whole event. Friends, uh, we are here to discuss rivers. And the rivers are such a remarkable entity. They are possibly the most wonderful entity on earth. Most uh, wonderful ecosystem on earth. Possibly the most complex of them. A river actually is a report card of what we do in the whole catchment. It all gets reflected. And at the same time, it gives us so much. The rivers gives us so much. You know, we have been, our ch childhood, we are talked about, we are told about the civilizations which have been set up on the banks of the river. All our needs, basic needs, come from river, and we can't survive without the rivers. And at the same time, it has been our grouse that we do understand rivers so little. We don't even have a definition of what is a river. What is a river? For an engineer, it's just a water body, a channel of water. Sir talked about uh, uh, biodiversity. <laughs> uh, and uh, we, uh, there are many other aspects. There is, if you ask a uh, geomorphologist, he will talk about the sand in the river. If you go to the coastal region, there will also be, there will be fisher people, there are boats people, so many people depending on the river. Uh, there are irrigators, there are water suppliers and so on. So, uh, two years back, five organizations came together and thought that let us come do something to deepen our understanding of rivers, appreciation of rivers, and see how we can uh, move forward. Because, you know, for example, if you want to know what is the state of our rivers, which is the theme of this uh, India Rivers Week, there is no agency in India, there is no report, there is no monitoring. What is the state of the, such an important entity? There is nobody. So there is no way to even know what is the state of our rivers. And uh, so we came together uh, two years back, five organizations which are written here. And uh, the first uh, India Rivers Week was organized in 2014 under the leadership of uh, uh, Ramaswamy Ayerji. He is no longer with us, but uh, his spirit and his uh, words are still with us. Uh, this year when we were, uh, mm, uh, you know, we, we had decided in 2014 that we will do a national level India Rivers Week every two years and we will hope that there will be a state level initiatives in between. Last year we had India Rivers Day instead of for India Rivers Week here. Uh, it had a number of aspects. India Rivers Week includes bringing together people, individuals and organizations who are working on the conservation of rivers uh, to collectively think through that wha how what we can do to improve the state of the rivers. We had also have a number of other elements. For example, we have a Bhagirath Prayas Samman where we try and honor 
the people who have done good work about rivers. We have, for example, this year a river lecture by an expert who will, uh, Bridge Gopalji, who will uh, tell us about how he sees, a scientist, uh, activist, who will, who, how he sees the rivers. So uh, it's an evolving theme, you know, and we hope we all continue to contribute to this theme, how we can uh, um, continue this effort. Uh, this year, when we thought of uh, organizing the India Rivers Week, we thought that if we don't know what is the state of our rivers, then let us make it the theme and try and get reports from all the states. So we sort of identified people from different states who are working on these issues to prepare a state-wise report on state of the rivers in their state. And then we, we prepared a guideline that what is it that we want them to include. And uh, we had a, a, a what uh, Ravi Chopra ji calls a laundry list of uh, uh, hydrologist uh, you know, uh, needs. But actually, we also included uh, other aspects, uh, whether it's biodiversity, whether it's livelihood, how people depend, what the governance of rivers or pollution or mining or urban areas, urban rivers, and so on. So we try and include that. But we realized that that itself is not going to be enough. So then we thought through that if we want to assess health of a river, how do we do that? So we. Came, we again thought th together and came out with a, some sort of a draft rural health assessment uh, methodology, which will be discussed in the following sessions. And uh, we want to, you know, uh, finalize it collectively. Uh, so, uh, in each state reports, we also wanted them to include three kinds of, you know, categorize the rivers in three categories. Blue rivers, rivers which are close to natural state, healthy state, uh, pink rivers, Meaning rivers which are threatened, which are relatively not in natural state, but they are threatened. Or they are already in uh, bad state, there is one dam or there is pollution and so on. And then the red rivers, rivers which are uh, significantly destroyed uh, uh, or are in very bad state, or they have dried up, or they are totally polluted. Uh, Kapil Mishraji is not here, but uh, for example, Yamuna in Delhi, can be called a red river. It's one of the most polluted stretch of the rivers. So we wanted each state to also do this, identify and classify the rivers. And we, ho we hope that at the end of this exercise, uh, we realize it's a very ambitious uh, uh, exercise, I mean ambitious target, that at the end of the, the three days, we want to come out with a list of rivers in India, which are in these classes, three classes. Then we realize that the, some of the rivers are so big, for example, Ganga or Indus or Brahmaputra or Godavari or Krishna or Sabarmati or Narmada, they are huge rivers. And you can't have just one assessment for the whole river. So we decided that, okay, we will divide the river into units of assessment. In fact, the ideal thing would be that each catchment area of around, say, 2,000 square kilometers, which is itself quite big, but if we can do that, we, if we can divide the country into segments of 2,000 square kilometer catchment area, and according to rivers, and assess the river of that area from 15, say, different parameters, biodiversity, pollution, dams, mining, encroachment, uh, uh, catchment area, uh, uh, you know, what is the state of the local water systems, wetlands, and so on, forests. So, you know, from different aspects one can assess and come out with such an assessment. But uh, we realize that's all again a very ambitious exercise, but we have hoped that ultimately we come to that situation. So, uh, you know, we realize that this is a, uh, I started by saying that rivers are such a wonderful, uh, remarkable entities. They have so many dimensions. It's a, such a dynamic, you know, one of the most remarkable literary figure, I mean, one of the literary works which has really talked about river is uh, Harmonisi Siddhartha. And I'm a great fan of that book. Uh, whenever opportunity arises, I try and quote it. And there, there is a conversation between the boatman and Siddhartha about the river. What is a river? What, what, all, what are the dimensions of a river? What we can learn from a river? What rivers tell us? So uh, we, I, I realize that we are on a very audacious, uh, we have taken up very audacious exercise. And uh, it also reminds me 
to end on a lighter note of a Bollywood uh, song of 1963 film called, uh, appropriately called Mujhe Jeene Do. Our uh, India Rivers Week 2014 brought out Delhi Declaration, which was called Let Our Rivers Leave. So it's as if title of the song is, t film is telling us, rivers are telling us, Mujhe Jeene Do. And that, sing, that film uh, starring Vaida Rahman and Sunil Dath has a song called Nadi Nare Na Jao Shyam Paiyan Padu. So I was thinking that, you know, what, are, what kind of exercise we are doing? It's impossible to achieve, but we have embarked on that journey. Uh, we need to collectively go forward and hope we can uh, go far in this. Uh, and uh, I'll end by, you know, saying that uh, whenever we talk about rivers, uh, three days back, Prime Minister was attending, uh, addressing a rally in Batinda. And he told that, you know, water is flowing waste to sea from these rivers. Now this, this concept of water flowing waste to the sea is a, is a remarkable uh, misnomer which we need to attack and continue to work on. But, uh, you know, when we talk about preservation of an entity ecosystem like river, we are told, but how can you, you know, this is a romantic idea. How can you preserve? I think we need to realize that if we want to survive, then rivers need to survive. If rivers do not survive, then we cannot survive. And this is increasingly being acknowledged by number of countries in the world. For example, US has decommissioned 2,000 dams in last 10 years. Europe is talking about room for the rivers. Korea has demolished urban structures to, so that the river can flow. Kapil Mishra ji is here. He promised last year that in three years, Yamuna will have uh, bathing quality water at least. Uh, we are hoping, but he also told us that Delhi doesn't need any more dams from water from anywhere else in future. The existing water supply is sufficient, and which is what we have been saying. But unfortunately, the Renuka Dam is still going forward, only in the name of Delhi's water supply. So uh, uh, we hope Delhi government takes up this proactively and ensures that at least tells us very clearly that Delhi doesn't need it. Uh, so, uh, you know, so it is not a binary exercise. We need to realize that for survival of the society, uh, rivers are necessary. And there's no agency in India which is working on rivers. There is a CPCB uh, which is talking about pollution and monitoring only few parameters of pollution of river. There is Central Groundwater Board which will talk about groundwater. There is Central Water Commission which monitors only surface water, but only from the point of view of dams, number of dams and so on. Uh, Pollution Control Board, uh, Kalyan Rudraji is here. You know, we have been saying, it's been 42 years since all this infrastructure of Pollution Control Board came, and I have been looking for one success story. One success story after 42 years of existence of whole bureaucracy on pollution. Please give us one source, one success story where a Pollution Control Board has achieved a clean stream or river. It's not, but how is it, what is the way forward? So if you can also guide us on that, on, with those words, I'll conclude. Thank you. Thank you, Manshuji. You really set the agenda for the conference. Uh, I'm grateful that Kapil Mishraji could join us. Uh, he's here with us. Now, I request um, Kalyan Rudraji, who is the chairman of West Bengal Pollution Control Board, uh, to tell us who governs our rivers. Please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I must declare that I am not representing West Bengal Pollution Control Board. <laughs> I am here as an... Uh, I love rivers. Uh, one of the greatest blunders I have made about two years back, I agreed on request of our Chief Minister to be 
the chairman of the West Bengal Pollution Control Board. And now I understand how difficult it is uh, uh, to work. The theme of this uh, workshop, who governs our rivers? Uh, why do we need to govern our river? This is the, the and Himangshu ji raised a very important question. We have a dramatic lack of understanding what is rivers. Normally, we believe that river has a source, river has an outfall, river has a right bank, and river has a left bank. And that is enough. Uh, no, river to me is, 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 this, is uh, what I say, the terrestrial part of the hydrological cycle. Uh, and if you look at the flow of the river, it is, in India, it is extremely skewed. And that is the problem for the river itself, because we want, a, we want to transfer the monsoon water for the non-monsoon season to facilitate our irrigation system. We take away water from the river and discharge the wastewater into the river. And I am from the Bengal, and Bengal is said to be proverbially land of rivers. But right at this moment, in this month, if you walk from South Bengal to North Bengal, uh, many rivers have gone dry. You can just walk across this river. I believe Jayadi will agree with me. Uh, this is not exclusively natural causes, because of the natural causes. This is largely due to human intervention. So uh, the question is very important. Who governs? My good friend, Imam Suji, wrote an article a few years back. And he raised this question, who governs our river? This was published in his journal. Uh, he listed, I read it, Ministry of Water Resource, River Development, subsequently Ganga Rejuvenation, one, Central Water Commission, Central Groundwater Board, National Water Development Agency, Ministry of Environment and Forest, Central Pollution Control Board, National Council for River Development, National Institute of Hydrology, Interstate River Basin Boards, National River Conservation Directorate, Central Electricity Authority, Ministry of Agriculture, and many other agencies. Since water is a state subject, so State Pollution Control Board and State Irrigation Department, sometimes the State Water Investigation Department, we call it SWIT, they also intervene. They also govern. But if it's a simple classroom question, who governs our river system? My answer would be, it is nobody. Uh, because caring means it is as mother cares the child. What we do, we exploit the river. We hardly talk about the ecological services rendered by the rivers, render many apparently invisible services to the society, we, which we don't regard. I, uh, myself, Himangshuji, uh, at least one success story I have. Uh, 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 there was a river uh, called Chandrabhaga in Birbhum district of Bengal. Bokreshar uh, uh, Thermal Power Plant committed a crime. It discharged entire of its flyways into the river. And there was a public interest litigation. And court and invited me and said, yes, I have called you not as the chairman of the board, but I want some suggestion. We intervened. And believe me, after about more than one year of sustained effort, that river has been rejuvenated. <laughs> uh, referring to the Himangsuji's uh, article, he said there is a there is a lack of coordination between between uh, between the different agencies. I will not go back to that article. I will talk about the philosophy that governs 
the Indian River Management. If we start from the colonial period, the British took over the administrative control of the northeastern part of India after the Battle of Plassey in 17, uh, 19, sorry, 1757. Subsequently, they controlled almost the entire country. Uh, please keep in mind, this was almost contemporaneous to the Industrial Revolution in UK. And at that point of time, they have invented steam power. They have learned to use steel and cement. And a new kind of engineering gradually developed in Europe. That is said to be the engineering of the command and control over the nature. The first intervention they made in Bengal and eastern part, uh, in northeastern part of the country, they wanted to achieve freedom from flood. Because they have a dramatic lack of understanding what role the flood played in agriculture of India. Because flood has many ecological roles. Most important one is it is a sediment dispersal mechanism. Look at the Indian map like this one. All flood prone areas are historically very fertile. What they did, they understood that this flood interrupts the revenue collection system. So they wanted to achieve freedom from flood. The f one of the first major rivers that was tamed was Damodar. If you look at the history of the Damodar Basin, it is such a basin that it has a rich coal resource in its upper catchment, and lower part is extremely fertile. And if you go to the readings, writings of the Hamilton, a British historian, it said the Borthuman district could produce so much of food crop because of the Damodar that it could feed entire Bengal. That river was described by the British engineers as sorrow of Bengal because they had some other kind of intention. And the minister will agree with me what happened that they embarked the Damodar, leading to the decay of Damodar. And when they embanked Damodar, after a few years after embanking, there was famine in Bengal, in the lower part. Learning from the experience, the British engineers did not touch Kosi till they left India. But that embankment building culture continued in many parts of the country. British left India, but look at this, they did not build some large structures as we build today. They did some low structure, what they called wear, and excavated some canal. And this was also imported from the British Institute, this technology. This was described by some historian as canal mania. This was extensively followed in UK, but rivers in Europe, flowing in Europe, are distinctly different from the rivers flowing here. We fail to realize this, the technology which is maybe successful, might be successful in Europe, cannot be successful here. Because this river, say Ganga Brahmaputra system, carries highest sediment load in the world. If you tend this kind of river, it will be compelled to deposit the sediment load, and it will be a total mess. But what Britishers first did, they interrupted the horizontal disconnectivity of the river. That means the relationship between the river and the floodplain and the wetlands. Sir was talking about this. So, but the longitudinal disconnectivity, as we see today, total desiccation of a river downstream of any structure, that was not made by the British engineers. But British left India in 1947. But that engineering philosophy of command and control and transferring the water to far away continued. Please allow me to say that 
that philosophy of river management was borrowed from the West, and that was being taught till date in even the different engineering colleges. What we did, uh, the, because of ever increasing population, we changed our agricultural system. A new kind of technology we adopted, what we uh, named as green revolution. And more and more water intensive crops were introduced even in the areas of low rainfall. In Bengal, we cultivate a kind of rice, what we call boro rice. It is normally planted in December, harvested in April. This is the lean season when we have a rainfall of about 100 millimeter. But during four months life cycle, this water, uh, this crop demands 1,500 millimeter of irrigation. W production of one kilogram boro paddy demands about 5,000 liters of water. And that too being exploited from the groundwater. We constructed many dams and reservoirs. And what we did, we excavated some canals. Now, it is the official records of the government of India, only 38% to 40% of the water that we stored reaches the tail end. But we have changed our agricultural pattern in the meantime. It, it has a huge demand. So we started to exploit the groundwater table. What was the result? The in reduction of the, of the groundwater level reducing the base flow that earlier rejuvenated the river during lean season. So many rivers which were earlier perennial became ephemeral or seasonal. And many went dry. Many rivers went wiped out from the, from the surface of the earth. Post-independence era witnessed a dramatic change in agriculture. How and the net irrigated area in India increased from 19.4 million hectares in 1947. And the potential irrigation area created so far, as demanded by the government of India, is 110 million hectares. And this is largely groundwater dependence agriculture. And we normally forget what relation the river has with its the groundwater exploitation. It reduces the base flow. And when the river goes dry, I mean, technically, this is the longitudinal disconnectivity we have created in the river. The biodiversity totally disappears. I was working on the Tista water sharing, as desired by our government of West Bengal. We made a structure on the Tista. And there was a kind of fish that is we will find only in North Bengal, which is locally called Boroli fish, that swims against the river. As we built the structure, that started to disappear. Now you will hardly find that kind of fish. I was, I was looking at the database of the Ganga. Uh, the, Ganga, during this year, in the month of April, recorded lowest flow at Paraka because of the indiscriminate exploitation of the water in the upstream. Even the NTPC thermal power plant had to remain closed for several days. The way we are dealing our river system is really borrowed from the west. And that, that does not match with the, with the system we are flowing, we are, the rivers flowing here. It reminds me who raised the, this question first. It is none other than Rabindranath Tagore. He wrote a drama long back in 1922 called Mukto Dhara. I believe English translation is available. You, you can read it. He raised the upstream downstream conflict as we are debating today in Narmada Valley and other parts of the country. But Rabindranath, he visited Europe, and he realized first 
that this development paradigm is suicidal. We need a paradigm shift. I strongly believe that we need a paradigm shift. We need an ecological engineering that suits, that matches with our ecosystem. That is important. Otherwise, uh, I see many senior citizens here. Uh, I, 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 am, I am 64. Dinesta must be more than that. Uh, our lifetime will somehow be managed. But my students, some of them I see sitting back bench, I strongly believe the way we are managing our river system, this is suicidal. Uh, so we, the theme of this workshop must be, we should demand a paradigm shift of a new kind of ecological engineering that saves our river and our ecosystem. With these few years, words, I stop here. Thank you all for your patient hearing. Thank you very much, sir, for these strong words. And really, uh, indeed, we uh, the river uh, it, it needs a paradigm shift in in thinking and in practice. Uh, now I request uh, Anupam Mishra ji to please uh, give us his words of uh, Ashirwad. As I mentioned, Anupam Mishra ji is, uh, has been through a very serious illness and we are really grateful that he found time to be with us. Uh, <laughs> एक बार तो खड़ा होने की हिम्मत कर सकता हूं पर फिर मुझे बैठे-बैठे बोलना पड़ेगा क्योंकि दर्द बहुत होगा जी आ, मुझे पिछले फरवरी में डॉक्टर मित्रों ने बताया कि कैंसर हुआ है लेकिन यह बड़ा सरल है जल्दी ठीक हो जाएगा वो डॉक्टर की बात सही नहीं निकली वो कठिन कैंसर ही था और उसको अभी तक वो ठीक नहीं कर पाए अभी कुछ समय और लगेगा कुछ समय का मतलब 3 महीना 4 महीना जो भी तो वो तो उनके हाथ में है अपने नदियों के साथ भी एक कैंसर काम कर रहा है वो है डेवलपमेंट वाला वो है इरिगेशन वाला कई तरह के कैंसर हमारे बीच में प्रकृति के ऊपर आए हैं सबसे पहले तो मैं आपसे ये निवेदन करना चाहूंगा आवाज ठीक आ रही है आपको कोई दिक्कत है क्योंकि मुझे थोड़ा सुनने में भी दिक्कत आई है जो काम काम हुआ है जो एक कान बंद है नदी हर भाषा में बहती है कावेरी नदी कन्नड़ में भी बहती है और तमिल में भी बहती है लेकिन वहां रहने वाला समाज जो कन्नड़ बोलता है जो तमिल बोलता है वो आपस में झगड़ता है कि ये नदी हमारी है नदी की कोई भाषा नहीं तो यह हमको भूलना नहीं चाहिए आ, मेरे बाद भी दो लोग बोलेंगे और उसमें कपिल जी की पारिवारिक परिस्थिति का भी हम लोगों को ध्यान रखना है कि इतने बड़े दुख में से वो खुद निकल के यहाँ तक आए तो इन लोगों के लिए ज़्यादा समय छोड़ना चाहिए नदियों पर सरकारों का ध्यान गए अब कोई चालीस साल हो रहे हैं इन्होंने खुद बताया बयालीस साल एग्जैक्टली इन 40 वर्षों में इस काम पर खर्च होने वाली राशि भी लगातार बढ़ी है अपने समय में कुछ 50 तीन करोड़ पांच करोड़ में भी हम लोग घबरा जाते थे अब तो 20 हजार 25 हजार करोड़ से कम की कोई बात नहीं कानून भी बढ़े हैं सख्त भी हुए हैं और ये भी कहा जा सकता है कि सरकार का थोड़ा उत्साह भी बढ़ा है पानी के मामले में चाहे उसको चाबुक लगा होगा कुछ भी लगा होगा पिछले दौर में शायद श्रद्धा की कमी थी शोध जाते था कि भाई रिसर्च करो रिसर्च करो अभी नमामि वगैरह भी आ गया है तो शोध और श्रद्धा दोनों जुड़े हैं नतीजा कितना निकलेगा ये नहीं मालूम किसी को अभी क्योंकि जो ढांचा है नदियों की देखरेख का 
वो कई ढांचे हैं ये भी किसी ने बताया वो जो तब था वो अभी भी है उसमें कोई परिवर्तन नहीं है पहले तंत्र था अब उसमें मंत्र भी जुड़ गया है कोई दूध भी डालता है नदी में कि दूध डालने से दो मन दूध डालने से ठीक हो जाएगा जरूर डालो भाई अगर इससे ठीक होता हो तो या बच्चों को पिला भी सकते हो ये भी एक उनके सामने प्रस्ताव रख सकते हैं लेकिन वो अलग बात है उस पर चर्चा का समय नहीं है हम लोगों को समझना ये चाहिए कि नदी का भी एक अपना धर्म होता है एक स्वभाव होता है क्या है वो स्वभाव बहते रहना नदी का धर्म है बहते रहना पिछले एक दौर में हमने विकास के नाम पर तकनीक की सहायता से जो इन्होंने बहुत अच्छे से बताया अमेरिका में कैसे कैसे भाप का आविष्कार और ये वो सब पैरल चलते हैं उससे पूरा ये नदी धर्म हमने बदल दिया है उसको हम कहीं भी रोक सकते हैं कहीं भी मोड़ सकते हैं और कहीं भी उसको सुखा भी सकते हैं और बहा भी सकते हैं नए नए इलाकों में नदियाँ बहेंगी शायद उनके नाम भी नए रखे जाएंगे और कौन से नाम रखे जाएंगे अभी तो मुझे पता नहीं आजकल तो नाम रखने का तरीका भी ऐसा है कि अचानक कमाल हो जाता है कमाल से आप समझ सकते हैं खेती उद्योग और शहर इन तीन चीज के लिए पानी जुटाने हमने अपनी सब नदियों को बर्बाद किया है हर एक से पानी खींचा है साफ पानी लिया है और बदले में उसको गंदा पानी दिया है अब इस परिस्थिति के रहते कौन सा तंत्र कौन सी आरती कौन सी तकनीक कौन से फ्लोटिंग यंत्र आजकल दिल्ली में भी कुछ हम लोग देख रहे हैं कि कुछ यंत्र तैराए जा रहे हैं वो कचरा खींच लेंगे बड़ी अच्छी बात है उन यंत्रों की पूजा करनी चाहिए जो नदियों से कचरा खींच लें उनको धन्यवाद भी देना चाहिए एक दिन जाकर हम सबको तो ये सब है कि कौन साफ करेगा मैं ऐसा मानता हूँ कि नदियों को जो साफ पानी मिलता है वो मिलने दें और बाद में उसके पंडाल से कैचमेंट से जो साफ पानी आज बाढ़ में बदल जाता है उसको रोक के रखें तालाबों वगैरह के जरिए तो साल भर वो अपने समाज की ज़रूरत पूरी करते करते धीरे धीरे नदी में नीचे आता है और नदी को रिचार्ज रखता है और उसको वो पानी देता है इन्होंने बताया कि कैसे नदियों में बाढ़ आ जाती है और बाकी समय में सूखी रहती हैं आप उनको क्रॉस कर सकते हैं तो ये सब स्थिति कई जगह हैं बड़ी नदियों को हम मार नहीं सके इसका हमको दुख है छोटी नदियों को तो हमने मार दिया है बारह पंद्रह किलोमीटर की शायद ही कोई नदी बची हो बरसात वाले दिन उसमें एक ट्रक बह जाता है तो बड़ा आचरज होता है कह रहे इतनी तेज नदी थी ये बाकी तो आप पैदल पार कर सकते हैं उसमें कहीं से भी तो मुझे लगता है कि हम लोगों का ध्यान अगले तीन दिनों में नदियों को छोटी नदियों को बचाने पे भी जाना चाहिए छोटी सी छोटी नदी उसका एक एक बूंद पानी मिलके धारा बनती है और ये जो विकास के नाम पर एक कैंसर आया है उसमें चुराया गया पानी किसी काम का नहीं होगा ये पक्का मानिए किसी शहर के लिए किसी उद्योग के लिए किसी खेती के लिए पंजाब ने बहुत पानी लिया है जो उसके हिस्से का नहीं होगा हरियाणा ने भी लिया है दोनों में कोई अंतर नहीं है लेकिन वो ही है कि ये मेरी नदी है ये तू तू मैं मैं हो रही है नदियों को लेके इस समय जमीन की कीमत तो आसमान में होगी ही इस समय तो कोई तालाब शहर में बचेगा नहीं गांव में नहीं बचेगा आपको देखना पड़ेगा कि इसके पीछे कौन सा प्राइस टैग डाला जाए कि वो बच सके अंग्रेज जब यहाँ आए थे तो ऐसा लोग बताते हैं कि कोई तीस लाख बड़े तालाब थे हमारे देश में वो भी ध्यान रखिए बिना सिविल इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज के कोई 